flame is a fire. Amen. It burns with love for you. Amen. That's where our faith is. That's where our hope is. Our hope is not in a building, in a steeple on a church. It is in an honor that was hung on a cross at a place called Golgotha. Amen. Where he bled. Oh, glory. Where he bled. And he died for you and I. He's the one that rose from the grave. Amen. He and he alone. You want to put your faith in me? Guess what? Get ready to be disappointed. Come on, somebody. You want to put your faith in the church? Guess what? Get ready to get disappointed. Come on, somebody. Hey, the church, the church, the pastor, the church. Get over it. Your faith is in the wrong people and the wrong things. Come on, somebody. If you, if you, if you, if you are that delusional and you think that this is a perfect system made up of imperfect people, you got another thing coming. Let me just give you a little, a little forewarning. You think I'm the greatest preacher in the world? Stick around for a year or two, and I'm going to make you mad. Come on, somebody. Amen. Happens all the time. Happens all the time. Amen. Our faith and our hope is in Jesus. Being reconciled to Him. Renewing of the mind that we may be able to test and approve that which is uh, God's good, perfect, and acceptable and perfect will. That's a process of reconciliation that is being sanctified and is growing in grace from faith to faith, from glory to glory. We grow. Amen. And no matter where you find yourself on that road, it's the right road to be on. I said, no matter where you find yourself on that road, it's the right road to be on. One way, Jesus. That's it. Amen. It takes time. It, it, it's, good. it's not going to be easy. It's good. Sometimes you're going to be frustrated. Sometimes you're going to feel like you're not growing. Nothing's, getting, nothing's working out for you. Let me tell you something. Stuff might not work out for you the way you want it to. But I want to tell you something. That doesn't mean you're not on the right road. Come on, somebody. Our faith is not in, well, as long as it all goes according to my plan, I'm good with it. Well, get ready to get disappointed. <clears throat> Come on, somebody. Get cool, don't get quiet on me now. You're ready to shout while I'm <laughs> Watch, turn with me to Romans chapter 8. Romans 8. Watch this. This is coming, Apostle Paul. This is coming from a man of God that was shipwrecked, that was beat, thrown in prison, hungry, starving, cold, lied about. Come on, somebody. Thrown in prison. And all because he preached about Jesus. That's not fair, God. That's not fair. I'm just trying to do what you want me to do. Paul talked like that. Did y'all know that? That was, that, that was his voice. I'm going to tell you about Jesus. Listen up, Paul. I'm going to listen up. You know what? I think I'm going to talk like that the rest of the sermon today. <clears throat> All right. Turn with me to Ron Shepard. Hey. In verse. <laughs> Verse 31. Let's begin reading from the New King James Version. What then shall we say? <laughs> Some of y'all like, please quit already. Watch this. Listen. What then shall we say to these things? If God is for us, who can be against us? Follow along with me. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all. For us all. I'm going to say it one more time. Say it with me. For us all. Your neighbor, for them. For that coworker you can't stand, for them. Come on, somebody. For that mother in law you'd like to slap in the face, for her. 
some of y'all like, right? For that husband that gets on your nerve, for him. And all the ladies said, Amen. You are, man. You shouldn't be amen in that. You with me? He gave himself up for all. God delivered Jesus not just for white folks. God didn't just deliver Jesus for black folks. God didn't just deliver Jesus for Mexicans. God didn't just deliver Jesus for uh, Asians or Chinese or Syrian. He delivered Jesus for all. For all. I blow your mind. I, think, I believe it's in the book of Hebrews. It says... From one blood were all nations created. There's this thing I've seen. I think it'd be pretty cool. There's this thing I've seen on, uh, I don't know if it was on TV, but somewhere. I've seen this thing where you can, you can now, uh, you, and there's lots of different ones you can do, but you can send your, I don't know if it's like hair or saliva or whatever, you send it in and they check your DNA. See what kind of folk you are. See what you, who you came from. And it was so cool. It was like this little video. Some of you may have seen it. But it had all these people, Germans and, and uh, black people and uh, Chinese and all these different people of different nationalities, different countries. And they're like, yeah, I'm this. this oh, I, I'm French. I'm French. Right? All this stuff. They have just all of them we're going on and on about, yes, I'm full-blooded. I'm full-blooded Cherokee. <laughs> no, you ain't. Come on, somebody. You with me? All people were created by one blood. Anyway, that's another sermon. And so, so they're giving these people, they're, they're doing these DNA tests. They're checking everything out, right? And when the results come back, they were floored. So there was actually some of the people in the, in the little survey thing that they did that actually, act, listen, that were actually very closely related. <laughs> Don't think some people were going home saying, Mom, you need to explain something to me. <laughs> we need to have a talk. He gave himself for all people. I don't know if y'all understand how good that just that is. He gave himself for all people. There is not a person on the face of this earth that Jesus wasn't given for. So why would it be that we as his followers would not give of ourselves for any person. Think about it. Why would we withhold kindness or mercy or any other God-given attribute that what we have received because of what Jesus has done, why then would we Withhold that same mercy and that same love and that's was you yawning? Was you yawning? She was yawning. I like how she did it though, Andrew. She put the Bible back in spiritual. I'll tell you what, it gets worse now that you're 30. It's all downhill from here. Hallelujah. It's all downhill, Allie. Glory. Thirty. I wish I was thirty. Oh, yeah. uh, and all, all the other people said, "Amen." Amen. Oh, to be thirty again. Amen. Oh, to still be in a size thirty-four waist. Oh, glory! Woo! Hallelujah! That'd be awesome. <laughs> Some of y'all need to loosen up a little bit. Some of y'all. We're 
Where was I? So why is it that you and I would even consider withholding from anyone? Think about that, folks. I'm not saying that any of you do. But boy, there's something else within us. Even as believers at times, isn't there? There's a little bit of it. Come on, somebody. And I'm not saying, you know, I mean, just it is what it is. I mean, let's just be honest about it. It, it is what it is. It is something we need to work on, something that we need God to just, uh, we need a vaccination, amen, of that stuff in our life. Man, we need to get that cleared up, and man, we just need the heart of God in our lives and, and just on, on every level for every person. Now watch this. It says, He delivered him up for us all. How shall he, listen, not with him also freely give us all things. Who shall bring a charge, verse 33, who shall bring a charge against God's elect? Uh, it is God who justifies. Who is, uh, who is he who condemns? Listen, it is Christ who died and furthermore has also risen. Uh, who is even at the right hand of God who also makes intercession for us. You see that? You, know, you see this? You see this stuff? You see this? Who shall bring a charge against God's elect? If God is, it is God. Who, not if God, it, it is God who justifies. Who's going to bring a charge against you? God justified you. Yeah, but I know what they did. Yeah, they did. And? You with me? Oh, uh, let's see here. Who is he who condemns? It is Christ who died. Who, who, who's, who are you condemning? Who are you condemning? Some of y'all condemn yourselves. Come on, somebody. Who, who is it that condemns? He, any, who? Who is it that's condemning you? You're, you're his elect. He elected you. He didn't care if he's Democrat or Republican. He elected you. Come on, somebody. He didn't care. That's the greatest election uh, night news that you'll ever get. I don't care who would have won. Amen. The greatest election news that you ever got was when God elected you. Amen. He elected you. He, cho he chose you. Amen. Come on, somebody. Amen. And what's great about it is, is God, you, you didn't have to win a popularity contest for it. He chose you in Christ Jesus before the foundations of the world. He knew you. And He knew you before you ever did anything. Before, why, he, he, he knitted you together in your mother's womb. He knew everything there was to know about you before you knew anything. When you're still swimming around. He knew you. Come on, somebody. Think about it. Amen. You were just however many of the little chromosome thingies. Aren't they chromosomes? Is that right? They're little chromosome things. Floating around. Boom. Coming together. Your nose. Your ear. Everything. He, he, he. I'm true. I elect them. Before you ever had a chance to sin, he elected you. Come on, somebody. He chose you. He loved you. He gave Jesus for you. Before the lamb that was slain, listen, the lamb that was slain before the foundations of the world, God already had you worked into the plan. Amen. Oh my goodness. I'm 53 seconds over my time. Now watch this. Watch this. Listen, I'm wrapping up. Who is it that condemns? Christ who died makes intercession for us. Listen, verse 35. Who shall separate us from the love of Christ? Here it is. Shall tribulation or distress or persecution or famine or nakedness? Here it is. Nakedness. He who before the eyes everything is naked as everything's naked. Who shall separate us from His love? Nakedness. Watch. Or peril or sword. And as, it, as it is written, for your sake we are killed all day long. We are accounted as sheep for the slaughter. Yet, everybody say yet. Yet, yet in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. 
Here it is. I love this is Paul. This is shipwrecked, hungry, with without uh, prison, beaten, scourgings, death. Paul. I am persuaded that neither death nor life nor angels nor principalities nor powers nor things present nor things present listen nor things to come nor height nor depth nor any other created thing shall be able to separate us from the love of God which is in Christ Jesus our Lord. Amen. Listen to me church. How great is his love. You've been elected. You've been chosen. You are not condemned. You say yeah but if you knew. I don't need to know. He already knows. God hasn't changed his mind about you. You need to change your mind about God. God has not changed his mind about you. You need to change your mind about God. You think God's some kind of mean, you know, right every little thing, you ready to strike you down, and, and you can't come to it, and all oh, messed up again, or all oh, this. I got these issues. Everybody's got issues. Right. Allie's obviously tired today. She's 30. She's got issues. <laughs> now she's 30, she's going to have a lot more issues. <laughs> oh, I just got to pick on you. Don't I? But folks, listen to me. All of that is, sounds, in, it's in, it doesn't sound, it's encouraging to us that know, but to you that don't know, I pity you. I pity you. You're, you're living a life that's on your own terms, by your own rules, rebellious, you know, scoffing at anything that has to do with Jesus. You think it's just silly nonsense. I pity you. I pity you. Because you think you're going to live forever. You think that you're bulletproof? You think that, oh man, I got the, I got, I got all this stuff figured out. This is what I'm going to do with my life. This is where I'm going. Care who's out. This is, I'm, I'm, I'm the master. I'm the captain of my ship. I pity you. You're rolling the dice of eternity. Whoo, safe. Come on, somebody. Safe. Woo. I'm winning in life, man. Oh, yeah. I'm going. I'm, things are good for me. Woo. Yeah. I thought that was Lori again. She's going to be in trouble. <laughs> Got the world by the tail, man. Living your dream. Yeah. I'm successful. And it's all about you. It's been all about you. But God is faithful. Amen. I pity those that are backslidden. Been there, done that. Come on, somebody. Amen. I pity those that are without Christ. Been there, done that. There ain't no stones coming from this point. No stones coming. But I'm telling you, Jesus, Jesus is a high priest. You know, I was, I was having, I had some thoughts the other night. I'll share them. I'm gonna close. And I was gonna jot down Facebook and stuff. Then I thought, man, I don't do that. You know, just I mean, it was, I don't know, ten or twelve paragraphs. <laughs> I was just kidding. <laughs> you ever you read them before? Like, jeez, come on. Kind of skip to the bottom, see what it's all about. It's kind of what y'all y'all think sometimes in my service. I just skip to the ending. Let's go. But I thought about this because we are many times we're so earthly minded. 
I mean, we, we are. We all are. I mean, we all, we all guilty of it. Yep. And on some level, you know, sometimes we're just all kind of guilty of it. We get kind of wrapped up and focused on and building this and doing that. And, you know, we think, oh, and we kind of start to, you know, we're not really, I don't know. We're not really paying attention sometimes to kingdom stuff. You know what I mean? To kingdom stuff. You know, being being a being an ambassador to, for Jesus, a, me, a messenger of reconciliation. Sometimes we get all wrapped up in jobs and this and that and other. And I know I'm, it happens to everybody. I mean, it's it's just it is what it is, and, and it's hard to combat sometimes. You know, sometimes you just get busy. Sometimes you, I mean, just sometimes we got stuff we got to get done. There's nothing wrong. You all have been nothing wrong with that. You know? Sometimes you have your stuff done. Sometimes you have a daughter that buys a house and he's totally gutted and redone. Right. And it takes months and months and months. And months. <laughs> and months turn into years. Right. And, and, and then the next thing you know, the next thing you know, you're just like, where do I live? <laughs> where, where, am I married? And do I have do I have kids? Do I have grandkids? Do I have? Uh, inside joke for those of you that don't. Know. But anyway, but we do. We it's sometimes we do get wrapped up. We, we get kind of earthly minded, and we get so caught up and focused on what's going on in the world. Stay with me. We, we get, we're all caught up. I've been caught up in stuff. I, we've all been caught up. It's easy to get caught up in stuff. And, uh, and so, last night I was kind of thinking, pondering, just kind of just about stuff. And, and I thought, man, you know, it's, I wish, I wish we would get more caught, more, just, just as, if obviously not more, caught up in kingdom stuff than we do sometimes in worldly stuff. I wish that kingdom stuff would become more important to us as believers than worldly stuff. You know what I mean? I, 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 listen, it doesn't mean, you know, you know that you all probably heard the saying, you know, uh, some people can be so uh, heavily minded that they're no earthly good. I think that there's a balance, right? And some people can be so earthly minded that they're no heavenly good. Yeah, so there's this balance. I mean, you got, a, you got stuff, you got kids and, and stuff. That, you know what I'm saying? But I'm just talking about keeping the perspective as believers that while we are here on this earth, we cannot lose sight of why we have been elected. Amen. Of why we've been elected. Why has God chosen me? 